to plaintiff Robbie Parker. A, defamation slash slander damages past and future, $60 million. Yeah. B, emotional distress damages past and future, $60 million. With Parker and against Alex Jones and Free Speech Systems, and line A and line B, total $120 million. Yeah. by a jury. Woo. To plaintiff David Wheeler and against Alex Jones and Free Speech Systems and line A and line B, $55 million. Yeah. Uh, initial Never said their Jordan name, Wall. don't know who they are. $57 million, $20 million, $50 million, $80 million, $100 million, blah, blah, blah. You get a million, you get $100 million, you get a $50 million. Do these people actually think they're getting any money? Uh, so that's, of course, Alex Jones and a little flashback to his uh, pretending to be excited that he was going to owe so much money to the uh, families of the victims of the Sandy Hook shooting that he spent years of his life demonizing and conspiracy theorizing about and inspiring harassment and having them run out of their homes. And all the while he was making huge sums of money off of doing that and generating uh, a following amongst some of the worst people in the country. And um, yeah, finally, we had this case uh, that he lost and he was gonna owe a ton of money, $1.5 billion. The issue is that he has spent every minute between that and now, despite how uh, happy he was to see the verdict, uh, fighting to not have to pay the families literally a cent. And there's a new settlement uh, being proposed that would require him to almost only pay cents actually, cents on the dollar. $85 million over the course of a decade rather than the $1.5 billion that supposedly he should owe right now. So why would this be the proposed settlement from the families? Well, because they've been put in this horrible situation where they've been led to believe they'll get nothing. Lawyers for the family said they believe the proposal was a viable way to help resolve the bankruptcy reorganization cases of Jones and his company, Free Speech Systems. Basically, he's tried reorganizing the the nature of his company and where the money is all this you know, legal you know tom tomfoolery and trickery to try to hide the sources of money and all that but anyway the attorneys uh, accuse him of failing to curb his personal spending which we will break down and extravagant lifestyle failing to preserve the value of his holdings refusing to sell assets and failing to produce certain financial documents and so they've offered him two options either liquidate his estate and give the proceeds to creditors, uh, which it would seem if you owe $1.5 billion, you would have to do, but apparently he doesn't. Or pay them at least $8.5 million a year for 10 years, plus 50% of any income over $9 million per year. So the basic idea being that he has to pay a very tiny fraction of what he owes. And if he makes more than $9 million off a year off of his media company from spreading more hate and insanity, then he would have to pay only half of that at that point, kind of a tax on him weaponizing and monetizing hate. So we don't know if that's gonna work. Apparently his lawyers are saying that it's too high and unrealistic that he would be expected to be able to pay that. We're gonna debate whether that's an accurate assessment of his financial situation. Um, but Adrian, you're the actual lawyer, whereas I just watch suits. So what do you make of this proposed settlement and the way that he has avoided um, having to pay what he owes? The way in which Alex Jones has navigated this judgment or dodged it um, is really somewhat of an art. You know, the fact that he had tried to claim he didn't have certain assets, reorganize his company, even destroy his company, throw it into bankruptcy, all of these things, it really shows that this man is he is he's a criminal in his own right just by virtue of the fact that he is unwilling to acknowledge when he is engaged in these uh disinformation misinformation campaigns intentionally hurting people and defaming people and then refusing to accept any kind of accountability for it and i think that this proposed settlement is sufficient in some way for the amount of money that he owes these individuals but the fact that he is still pushing back he will push back until he pays 0 dollars instead opting to pay legal fees because he does not want to be held accountable. It's it's gross. Yeah, I so much about this is gross. Everything leading up to the verdict and the way that he's avoided having to, to pay it. Um look, they, they say he doesn't have this money. They just mm. you can't you can't get him to pay it. Um here's the issue is that we do have some information about what his company has made, uh, what he has spent. Um, apparently the company said it's expected to make about 19.2 million dollars just next year, 
just from selling dietary supplements, clothing and other merchandise. So that's not ad revenue and all of that sponsorship deals. That's just off of selling, you know, t-shirts and ground up like gorilla testicle brain supplements. That's all that is. 19 million dollars, but he can't afford to pay this. Uh he has listed 13 million dollars in total assets, uh including $856,000 just in bank accounts, just sitting there waiting. Doesn't need to be sold off. The money is just there. He has been receiving a salary of $20,000 Every two weeks, think about what you pay. He makes 20 grand every two weeks. It's 40 grand a month, actually slightly more than that. It's like 45 grand a month, uh, $520,000 a year. That was eventually upped to $1.5 million a year because he's so vital to the company. So he's making $1.5 million a year. By the way, according to court papers, he spent $93,000 in July of this year, excluding legal fees. Uh, but including more than $15,000 of the first of his two ex-wives, $7,900 for housekeeping. Is that like a new house? Uh, $6,000 on entertainment and meals. I buy that one. And $3,400 on groceries. So he sure has a lot of money to live it up, but not money to give to them. And I Look, I'm sure the legal team for the families doing everything they can to try to get access to that money. But the idea that he can have homes and spend massive amounts of money and all that, and it isn't just seized, I don't understand anything about this. And I think most people probably find the entire situation to be so sickening that they've probably just like tuned out. But when you dive into this, it is incredibly gross that this guy can ever have a significant amount of money again in his life, considering all that he owes and refuses to pay. Adrian, why isn't it easier to just sell your house? Like yeah, he so. has money, rent, rent, rent a little apartment. You won't if you can't afford the house, that's fine. You owe that money. So you sell the house, you sell your cars, you sell your plane or whatever it is that you have. Why is he allowed to have assets like this when he owes $1.5 billion? Exactly. You committed a tort against people and you changed their lives for the worse. And now you are having to pay a judgment for that. You agreed to be part of the citizen uh, of our country and our laws and to abide by them and you violated them. So now you have to make sacrifices. So make sacrifices. Like you said, John, like get an apartment, sell off some of your things. But instead, you know, he has these various companies in play, hiding assets here. Uh, giving uh, certain amounts of money to different family members and whatnot. He is really gaming the system. And, and this is oftentimes what we see from very wealthy people. And it's unfortunate, but it's also completely unsurprising given all of the behavior Alex Jones has engaged in and how our system is structured to keep the wealthy wealthy. 100%. Yeah. And like most people would be like, no, how he can never, you make him, make him live in an apartment. What, what are you talking about? Why is the assumption? That a guy like Alex Jones can never just be a regular person who's not wealthy. Well, and the answer is elitism, what he supposedly is against. That we, we're supposed to believe that all these people should be wealthy. I saw an article about how Kyle Rittenhouse is like broke now. Maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow on the show. And my reaction was, why is that news? Why would he be rich Nothing. as a result of what he did? When he didn't, there's no reason to believe he had money beforehand. And then he killed some people. Why is the assumption, oh, that person's in the news, so they're millionaires for the rest of their life? Why is that the way our society functions? But it 100% is. <laughs>